In this video, I'm going to talk about an idea in geometry that's known as the hinge theorem. And if you think of a door hinge, uh, maybe that would help you identify why it's called the hinge theorem. See, the door hinge is what the door swings on, right? And so the idea here is this. If, if I have a triangle, and let's say that I know this dark line here at the bottom is one side of my triangle, okay? So this thing is fixed in place at the fixed length, okay? Let's say that I have another triangle, another another side of the triangle, okay? And here is the length of that. I'm, I just happen to make it the same, so I'm, I'm making an isosceles triangle here, okay? If I draw an isosceles triangle, so this length is going to be the same, I know that the angle here is going to directly affect how long the line across from it from here to here is, right? A smaller angle here gives me a little line, and the bigger I make this angle, the bigger the line becomes. And that's what the hinge theorem says. So an instance, just, just to show you here, if I took a ruler and connected, let's say that my, ang my triangle looked like this, right? You can see here that this little triangle here that is formed when I connect, why is that so bright? Sorry about the contrast here. I don't know what's going on. If I go and I draw a triangle and I follow this as my third side and down here, I can see that this angle, if I go across from it, formed a little line, right? As opposed to, say, what if I went all the way up here? If my third angle is here, look how big that angle is that if I swing this door a little bit wider, there's a longer distance between those two points, right? And that's the big idea then, is that an angle in a triangle and its opposite side, the side that is across from it, they grow in proportion to each other. If one gets bigger, so does the other. So it sounds pretty easy, okay? It sounds pretty easy, but we're going to look at some examples maybe that are a little bit more difficult, okay? For example, typical problem. I'm asked here in this problem to order the angles in this triangle from the smallest to the largest. So in other words, if I compare the sizes of these three angles, angle A, angle B, and angle C, which one's the smallest and which one's the biggest. And if I know the hinge theorem, then I know that the smallest angle is across from the smallest side. That would be the four is the smallest side, and it is across from the B. I know that B is going to be the smallest of the three sides. I see six is the next smallest side, and it is across from the A, so I know that A is going to be the second smallest angle, and that leaves C to be the largest angle because it's across from the largest side. Pretty typical problem. I might also be asked to do the opposite then. Let's order the side lengths from smallest to largest. So my first step in this problem is actually to figure out what angle T is. And so I know that the three angles in here added to 180. There's 90 of it is gone, right? So I have 90 remaining. 42 of that is gone. That leaves me 48 degrees to go for this angle T. Now that I know that, I know that the smallest side goes across from the smallest angle. There's the smallest angle, so the smallest side is going to be the one across from it. That is side the, the side from S to T, right? I don't have another label for that, so I'm going to call that side ST, line segment ST. Now... The next smallest side is the one that's across from the 48 degrees. That is the side that connects R to S. So I'm going to call this RS line segment. And that leaves me the longest side, which should be the hypotenuse, right? And that's the one that connects R to T. That's because it is across from the biggest angle, 90 degrees. All right, two more example problems. Sometimes you'll be asked to compare two side lengths. So here I have a diagram, and they're asking me if I compared the side AB to the side DE, 
Which one's bigger? Is AB greater than, less than, or equal in length to side DE? Well, here's what I know. These two sides are the same and those two sides are the same. So really the only thing that could possibly make a difference is how far apart those sides are from each other. And if I know the hinge theorem, I know that the 35 degree angle here is not going to produce as long of a side length as this 47 is. I've spread the two lines out farther. So there's a longer distance from D to E. D to E is going to be the longer line. So I need to fill this in with DE is greater than the AB or AB is less than the DE. Last example might say something along the lines of this. Find the range of values for X. What in the world is going on here? See, what they're saying is if X is an angle here, this angle in here, what values could I put in for X that would be reasonable, that would, that would make the picture make sense, right? Pictures are not drawn to scale in this, by the way, okay? So, for example, if I knew that this side length was 7, that would be from here to here, and I know that the total was 12, I could probably conclude then that what was left over was a 5 over here, right? So that would be my first step, is to fill in the missing information. Now, if I know the hinge theorem, this is what I can tell you. This is the longer side from here to here. 7 is longer than 5. That means that the angle across from it has to be bigger. You know what I'm missing here? Those need to be tick marked. I'm sorry. That makes a difference. You probably don't understand why. Don't worry about it. But you're going to see tick marks on the problem. Okay. What I know is this. This 39 produced a 7, and this x angle only produced a 5. So based on the hinge theorem, I can conclude that this x is probably going to be smaller. It has to be smaller than the 39 degrees. x must be smaller, less than 39 degrees. It can't even be equal to it, because if x was 39 degrees, shouldn't that be a 7 as well, right? The other thing I can conclude is if this angle really exists, it would make sense to say that x must be greater than zero. Otherwise, we don't even have an angle over there, right? So if I'm going to put a range of values for x, I'm probably going to write it as an inequality, which is something like this. Zero is less than x is less than 39 degrees. And that's just a fancy way of saying x has to be between zero and 39. 0 is less than x. x is greater than 0, but at the same time, x is less than 39, right? Two requirements being met at the same time. That's a pretty typical set of problems that showed you a little bit of, uh, of four different types of problems you might see dealing with the hinge theorem. And we can use that then once again, the idea that the more we swing the door open, the farther it is between the two points, the two endpoints of the triangle. We can keep that in mind. The more I swing out, the longer the distance comes between the original point and the final point, right? And that's going to help us out.